hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective. And today I have a ThinkPad 760, and this is the EL variant. So to give you a little bit of background, the 700 series, generally speaking, was considered to be the higher end experience and is considered by some to be the predecessor of what would become the T-Series. Originally released in 1995, it had 12 different models across its entire lifetime, which was the most for any ThinkPad at that point. In fact, I don't think it was superseded until 2001. This very specific model, the EL, was made from May 96 to July of 1997. Now, one of the things that made the 760 incredibly iconic, other than its beautifully sleek build, was some of the really cool features that came with it. Upon opening it, you'll notice something very subtle, if you watch the keyboard, and that is it actually raises to a much more comfortable typing angle. So we can see that from the side right here, that it's been raised, and then when we close it, it snugs right back up. So let me show you that again. So very, very subtle, but increases the good typing feel that you would expect on a ThinkPad. Several other things that made this fairly desirable had to do with the display options. This particular model has an 800 by 600, 11.3 inch, 256 color DSTN panel. However, you could also get this in a 12.1 inch TFT 64K color panel, and that was actually an industry first. Most companies were really excited about the 11.3 inch, which was bigger than the 10.4 available, but ThinkPad uh, with IBM at that time jumped right for that 12.1 inch display, which is highly desirable as you can imagine. In terms of CPUs, across the entire range, there were multiple different versions and flavors. I'm only going to be focusing on the EL today. So the EL was a Pentium 1 and it was a fanless setup. So there was no fan at any point cooling this computer. So you either had the Pentium 100, 120, or 133. In terms of RAM, there was either 8 or 16 megabytes soldered onto the board, and then there's an adapter card underneath the machine I'll show you later, where two other RAM slots can be occupied and then the card is put into the machine. On paper, 72 or 80 megabytes was the maximum, but with EDO, you can get this up to 104 megabytes. You might need to do a BIOS update for that to be successful. So if you do try that and it doesn't boot, you probably need to update your BIOS on the machine that you have. Let's give a quick tour of the ports on this beautiful machine. So on this side here, we do have the PS2 mouse port. We do have two card slots, which we can see in there. Those are card bus, a Kensington lock slot for what it's worth. And then we have one of the catches. Along the back, we do have the power adapter, which is a four-prong affair. And then we have a cover here, which is for the docking connector. And if you're not using the docking connector, you can simply close that and flip this down to reveal the rest of your I.O. On this model in particular, we have serial, parallel, VGA, and then this would have been used for an external floppy drive. Oh, I almost forgot to mention, it has the infrared IR transfer blaster located on the back. Continuing our tour on the right-hand side of the machine, we have a headphone and microphone jack. And as you can see, these slots here are not being occupied currently, but they would be different IO for modems and other things. And then lastly, our last latch. And then along the front is where we have our Ultra Bay. So this was one of the first generations of Ultra Bay, and this is currently being occupied with a three and a half inch floppy drive, but it could also be occupied with either a 20 times CD-ROM module, or it could also be occupied by a second hard disk drive or a second battery. And now's the time to probably go into servicing the parts and the disassembly of this machine. It actually starts with us opening it, like so, 
And then if we take the same catches that we used to open the laptop, and rather than pull them toward us, push them away, take the two little ridges here, we can actually lift the entire keyboard assembly and access the major components of this laptop. And this is just beautiful. I know that there are a lot of laptops out right now that are being heralded and praised for their engineering and serviceability, but you really can't compare sometimes with the classics, and this is definitely one of those moments. So back here is actually where the motherboard lives, underneath that protective cover. And if you're looking for the CMOS battery, as well as the lithium backup battery, they're actually under the palm rest right here. You can undo the screws along here, remove this, and get access to those if you need to replace them. If, however, you need to, say, use a CD-ROM drive, it is a simple matter of taking the tabs and pulling up and removing it. Now, there is one thing that I will make pretty clear is how the connector here works. So this is a specific connector, obviously, for this bay. And then you're going to see this blue piece of plastic under here. The blue piece of plastic is actually a cover for the battery connector. So if we flip that up, we can now see that a battery connector is now present. So this cover right here can be used to cover this section right here to ensure that no contact is made. So that is simply installed there. That is flipped up and you are ready to take your battery pack and simply install it like that. There is a spacer that would go in front of here, which I do not have, but as you can see, the beautiful thing about this Ultra Bay battery is that you do not need a special battery to be seated in that section. You can use the standard battery that comes with the laptop. So if you've got more than one and you need that battery power, it's easily at your fingertips. So with that back in place, if we needed to install the CD-ROM drive, it would be a simple matter of just sliding that in, lining up the connector, pushing down firmly, and we're good to go. Our hard disk drive is located over here. It is missing the standard cover. However, the black tabs here can be pulled and the drive can be removed. And this is a 6.4 gigabyte disk, which is larger than officially supported, but with partitioning, not an issue. So as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to the interior service of this machine, few things could actually be simpler. The only other components that you might be servicing, of course, are on the bottom here, and this will give you access to the RAM. And oddly enough, it's toolless, so we can go ahead and remove that cover. And then this is the adapter card, and the adapter card simply lifts up. And then we have our two RAM slots occupied on the bottom. Realistically, folks, how much easier can a laptop possibly be to service? I tell you, that is just absolutely fun. Speaking of fun, this machine has a fantastic story. So this actually, if you want to know where I got the story from, it's actually from Steve Ham's book, The Race for Perfect. And apparently, so the story goes, in early 1996, the ThinkPad team had this idea of doing a fashion show with laptops. So literally having models carry their ThinkPads down the catwalk, if you will, showing them off and doing all this really, uh, you know, cute stuff. Now, that idea never saw the light of day. Um, so don't go YouTubing for ThinkPad fashion show because I'm pretty sure one doesn't exist yet. However, what did end up happening is the PR team leaked a 760 to some kind of Hollywood insider, and there's actually a story in Vogue, February of 96, that 
called this thing the new little black box or the new little black book or something like that. And the, the article shows this laptop just sticking out of a designer handbag. And I thought that was pretty cool that uh, they were marketing these pretty much wherever they possibly could, uh, which was a, a new tactic for ThinkPad at the time. Now, before we get carried away, let's go ahead and close the laptop and open it one more time to raise that keyboard. And we're gonna turn this thing on. Now, if you are looking to buy one of these, I will give you a piece of advice, is that sometimes when you think the display is dead, you need to very, very gently configure these switches for brightness and contrast, so you actually get a proper display. So, let's turn it on, listen to that hard drive whir. There's our IBM logo. There you go. So this one is actually running Windows 2000. Uh, I didn't put it on here. That's actually what came on here. And to make a long story short, and I'll cut some footage in here, is I didn't want to go through the hassle of reinstalling a fresh OS. So I actually uh, used some boot disks to essentially load a very, very light uh, version of Linux on there and go in there and reset the administrator password so I could actually log on to the device and use it. And that's exactly uh, what I did. And it worked out really, really well. So I'm gonna keep those boot disks around just in case I run into another laptop that needs uh, me to be able to boot into it. But as you can see, it is working just fine. One thing that I did notice is that you do really have to temper your expectations with these older displays. As you can see, the mouse cursor does ghost considerably. Uh, not much you can really do about that. It's just the older design. And you know what? For a laptop from May 96, it is not the slowest thing in the world, I have to say. So, you know, take that with... Uh, whatever information you will. Classic. And while this thing actually boots into Windows, which will take several minutes, let's see if I might be able to find a game or two to play. So obviously Cosmo's Cosmic Adventure is not the most strenuous task that this computer could do, but it certainly is uh, it's a throwback and I enjoy it. So if you are looking for one of these, you can still find them out there in decent condition without paying an arm and a leg. 
but you do need to understand that if you want one in working condition as good or better than this one, that you are probably gonna be paying a few hundred dollars Canadian unless you find one literally hiding in the back of like a, a shop somewhere that nobody really cares or knows what it is and they're just looking to get rid of it, you know, a fiver. Um, but what a cool piece of technology. I am amazed that the battery is doing as well as it is. It's at 86%, so I could probably get, oh, I don't know, a couple of hours out of this. No, uh, no problem. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video on this particular machine. And if you do have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below there. I'd love to talk to you about this, maybe some experiences that you've had with this computer. But to me, it is just one of the coolest that's out there, especially that modular design. At any rate, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. And I am going to encourage you to do the big four. Please like the video, share subscribe and hit that notification bell so if you would like to see the next thinkpad or laptop i feature on this channel right away you'll be the first to know about it thank you so much and i will see you next time